In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. We have uh, a big problem in the teaching of history in the schools, uh, not just in the Middle East, but also around the world. It is about the church history in the Middle Ages. The Catholic Church is presented always in a negative way, which is not actually the truth, which is part of the truth, and uh, someone said there is no bigger lie than half-truth. Uh, let us talk about some details. For instance, the Reformation. Reformation in the Arabic books, we have the word islah, which means correction, rectification. So the word islah is not accurate. And uh, when we talk about reformation, then it means to give a different form, uh, to renew something's shape, the shape of something or of someone. This is the meaning of the word reformation. Now, when we have to talk about history, we are not talking about religion now, we have to say the whole truth, as much truth as possible, as much as yielded by the historic documents themselves, not just to say that the Catholic Church was full of vices and of sins and of iniquity, and the others were all uh, angels and saints. Uh, we are all human beings. We do not, I do not excuse any mistake, error, sin, or iniquity, or injustice. But when we have to report what has been, then we have to report the whole truth, positive and negative, about the Catholic Church, positive and negative about the other denominations, but not just uh, something negative about the Catholic Church, nothing but negative, and nothing but positive about the other denominations, uh, which, by the way, did not exist before uh, 1521. As a matter of fact, uh, we have to, uh, to remember what St. Paul said, namely that all people have sinned, and they did need, they needed the glory, and, of course, the mercy of God. Now, uh, perhaps even Martin Luther was not keen on dividing the church. And some of his writings, uh, especially are uh, addressed to the Pope, uh, were very, uh, very nice and very positive, uh, contrary to other writings of his. So the, the drama was actually and is actually the division of the church into different denominations, uh, tens or thousands or hundreds or thousands of denominations, unfortunately. Uh, perhaps what the school books do not mention is that this very 16th to the 17th century, in the history of the very Catholic Church, which is accused of corruption as wholesale, uh, as wholesale statement, well, is known in the church history as the century of the saints. The century of the saints. Well, these are holy men and women who are not just individually saint and holy, but they also founded uh, congregations, orders, institutions, and most of them uh, until uh, last until now, they reformed dioceses uh, and religious institutions without leaving the church, without dividing the church. Uh, we wish that uh, something of the same uh, had occurred with uh, the Reformation uh, personalities uh, such as Martin Luther, Jean Calvin, Ulrich Zwingli, uh, and others. Uh, well, the latest visit of uh, His Holiness Pope uh, Benedict XVI to Germany, where he actually 
praised Luther for searching God, for looking for God, for wanting the truth, wanting purity of faith, although he did not uh, succeed in all these uh, uh, goals of his, uh, this is an encouragement for us uh, to get closer to each other in to practice the truth in love, in brotherly love, as St. Paul puts it in Ephesians uh, 4.15. Actually, Jesus had told us also that truth does uh, set us free. Well, here are some of the saints uh, who left their uh, traces in history and who actually crowned that uh, 16th to the 17th century, which uh, was also, unfortunately, the century uh, of the beginning of the protest movements, which led, uh, as I said, uh, to hundreds and thousands of denominations until the present day. St. Philip Neri, 1515. He founds the Oratorio in 1575. St. Teresa of Avila, we say the big Teresa, 1515 also. In 1562, she renews, she reforms the monastery of St. Joseph. Uh, St. Charles Borromeo in 1538, he is cardinal in 1560. He reforms the Archdiocese of Milan. 1542, St. John of the Cross. He also helps to renew the, the Carmelite convents. Madame Akari, St. Francis de Sales, Francis of Sales, 1567, Bishop of Geneva. He founds the Order of the Visitation with St. John de Chantal, 1572. In 1575, Pierre de Berulle reforms the Carmel of Paris. 1581, Saint Vincent de Paul. In 1612, he is parish priest of Clichy. Then he founds the seminary uh, in 1635. He founds the Lazarist Fathers the Sisters of Charity, the Societies of St. Vincent for assistance to the poor. 1588, Charles de Cordier. 1581, Louise de Marillac. She founds actually the Sisters of Charity, the Daughters of Charity. St. John Eudes, the 1643, is the Seminary of Caen, or Keen. Then, Jean-Jacques Ollier, the seminary of St. Sulpice. Let's not forget the big, the great personalities and saints of the Middle Ages. Uh, St. Augustine, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Albert the Great. Let's not uh, forget St. Francis of Assisi, founder of the Franciscan Orders. Let's not forget St. Ignatius of Loyola, founder of the Jesuits. Uh, let's not uh, forget <coughs> St. Uh, Dominic, the founder of the Dominicans. Uh, well, all these saints did reform the church in uh, staying in it and not dividing it and not leaving it. So, uh, as Jesus said, let us pray especially after half a century of ecumenical movement, let us pray that Christians get closer to each other and so that all may be one. Amen. Thank you.